guys. Uh, my name is Stephen Crane, and this is my sewers level. So this week I had set out to set design the entire central area of my uh, level here, uh, and that is what I've done. So let's uh, start with the bottom down here. Let's turn off these effects, um, and then work our way up. Whoop. Excuse me. There we go. So. As you can see, this kind of ground floor I've made to be, well, the bottom of a sewer. Um, so it's got standing water, uh, reinforced walls, uh, some cabling uh, above that expected water level kind of thing. So as you can see, you've got a lot of like hanging wires, uh, low yield light fixtures that aren't too bright but enough to kind of illuminate the immediate area around them. Uh, let's uh, go into one of these tunnels here. So there's a, kind of a light fixture in the back here and it's bright enough to kind of grab your attention um, from anywhere here in the center um, or on the side. It's like, oh hey, something at the end of the hall uh, kind of draws you up into the upper levels. Um, further, um, once again I have placed, whoops, uh, placed weapons uh, such as rockets up in top middle here um, and quad damage back in the corner over here. Uh, so everything typically will kind of flow down towards those when they respawn and then back out to the sides and upper levels uh, once those have already been grabbed. Um, so let's go back into this tunnel again. So we've got some health over here. Uh, got some more dim lighting. Um, typically for these hallways I try to make it um, a little bit more dimly lit than out in the main area. Main area's got a lot of like cross lights, some of these hanging light fixtures that I've made appear a little bit more powerful than some of the default uh, side lights. Um, but then also recently uh, I made these pipes that kind of go through. It's completely gutted out but it's got some grating in the way so people can't just run through the tunnel. Um, but you can use it as a line of sight. You can see who's kind of going back to this door and going around over there. Um, this door is openable. Uh, there is a trigger box around here that when you step into the trigger box it listens for a key press, in this case E. So when you're within the trigger box area you can press E and it will actually trigger a matinee that opens the door. end of the hallway over here. This room is actually uh, completely unlit normally. Um, the way that it, you turn lighting on in here is by opening the door. It's the same lever. Um, and this door is activated. It not only opens that door and turns on that light, but it does the same thing for the other side. Uh, and that trigger is right here. Once again, it's an uh, unused trigger. So you not only have to step into the trigger field, but you also have to press E to activate it. Um, what it does is it'll activate a matinee that rotates the lever down, and then once the lever's been rotated, the lights come on and the doors begin to open. Uh, once the doors open up, both here and where I previously showed you, as well as on the other side over here, uh, once those doors open, it kind of allows access to a back area where you can kind of go around the long way um, but since it's kind of going around the long way it's a little safer you can kind of take the back route take a detour uh, that way you don't have to go through as like high yield of combat um, once again I have uh, more doors with uh, activation panels open them this one it just ascends. Um, I was having some lighting issues, uh, 
but I figured out how to destroy static meshes in Kismet. So what was happening was the door would ascend uh, into the wall here, and then it would cast its shadow both on this side of the wall, the other side of the wall, and on the back wall, um, creating some real weird shadow casting. Um, so ultimately, I just ended up destroying it uh, once it has finished its matinee of ascending, um, which was the only real solution I was able to find at this point. Um, gonna be kind of exploring some of the lighting and shadow casting features. Um, found something on the Unreal site or whatever, so looking more into it, uh, just kind of checking my avenues for different options and whatnot. But anyways, once you go through there, you also have another door, same thing, you just press the button and it activates it, it sends, um, and that uh, gives you access to the upper area of that outside uh, route. Um, there are three access points, the two that I've showed you on the first floor and then the one here on the second floor, so it's not just a single running tunnel. Um, that way you have a little bit more uh, maneuverability options. Uh, then once you get to the second floor, the second floor I used a lot more electrical panels. Um, I ended up creating see if I can find a little bit more. Here's one. Um, I ended up creating these kind of electrical uh, box fields. Um, it's got actually quite a few items in it um, to make it look like oh, actually here's a better one. Um, to make it look like it's, it's this big like power generation thing on the wall. And then of course it's protected by a steel cage. Um, so this is actually, uh, let me turn these artifacts back on, this is actually a ton of objects that I sh either shrunk down or were already pretty small, and <laughs> I just interconnected them to one another. Um, a bunch of cabling to kind of give that feel that it's electrical devices, um, a lot of like flashing lights on them. A lot of battery shaped things and panels and all that. Um, but that's completely custom made. Um, of course, I didn't create the static meshes, but I merged some of the static meshes together to kind of give this electrical panel feel to it. Um, and so that's kind of spread throughout the second floor as kind of like the second floor aesthetic, um, where the first one was more reinforcing structures. Uh, making sure that it's a really strong foundation, something that won't uh, crumble or decay when it gets wet because of like all these back sewer pipes and whatnot where uh, rising water levels will kind of affect the walls and whatnot. So I wanted to give it that feel that the bottom's like really reinforced and strong and sturdy, where the next level is kind of like where all the cabling and wires and stuff uh, really come from. Uh, but they connect into kind of that like upper level of the first floor, um, so it's kind of like how the circuits travel all around the area, um, and that's that's just kind of stepping repeated around. Um, also, for the doors and windows, I used uh, cement cinder blocks to create door frames and window frames that look like they're closable objects, so it looks like an iris could. Uh, descend or contract uh, in that opening in case like water levels were getting too high or whatever they were able to effectively close off doors and windows to uh, control the flow of where that water goes or whatever I really try to keep true to that uh, sewer feel in all of these designs um, and then of course we've got the catwalks uh, along the second level which have like piping uh, that runs along the sides of them as well as guardrails. Um, I wanted to give it that feel like this is a sewer so there's always like these pipes going everywhere to try to get water to different locations to try to pump it back out wherever it's going to end up going from wherever it's being collected from. Um, also something I forgot to mention is we I do have a bunch of these uh, pipes uh, along kind of the upper edge of the first floor here. 
they're going into different areas, coming from different locations, uh, going all over the place and whatnot. Um, so then, on the third level, I've got a lot of uh, hanging wires. It's kind of the makeshift um, lighting power source, um, where it's not so much focused on any like electrical box or whatever. It's a little bit more bare walls. It's it's effectively the level where most of the people will kind of be going if they end up coming down here kind of feel um, where the level, lower levels are not so much um, but so yeah just I kind of went with a lot of like hanging wires uh, and lighting fixtures and whatnot um, also over a couple of these doors instead of just having your typical wall light um, I ended up putting spotlights and those much like the hanging lights like this one uh, I made much brighter, um, but I also kind of threw them more against objects, so it looks more like there's a spotlight being cast, um, where this one's kind of cast right here, this one's right here. Let me turn on these artifacts. So for this one, I just combined the two, uh, put it between the two levels, and gave it quite a wide radius and intensity can see here it's got a 500 radius with the three brightness um, so that's that's how effectively I gave that feel that like there are these big spotlights or whatever um, and then of course the smaller lights I have smaller radius um, so we can go over here and show you a little bit better so you can kind of see how it's just outlining kind of the wall around the light and the window um, so it's as much smaller radius um, and a lower uh, brightness or intensity um, to kind of give it that like it's it's a dim lit uh, light fixture kind of thing um, and then so yeah I really played with like some of the shadows um, you can kind of see some of the wiring going off into the darkness um, but it's like wherever like you really don't need light fixtures um, where there aren't like windows or whatever like it's, uh, they just didn't bother putting them in because there's no real use to like the whole area um, versus just where kind of people will be at um, which of course is at the doors and windows or whatever and that kind of leaves like the center area kind of semi dark as well um, but also allows me to light the bottom um, through that so but yeah this has been my map thus far uh, the only other things is I've kind of used some of these eye beams and, um, oh, I don't know what you want to call them, like, crossbar sectionals, um, to kind of, uh, outcrop a little bit more, so that the wires aren't just, like, floating in midair or whatever, like, they're attached to something. Um, so yeah, I used a lot of, like, this rusted metal look, um, I've got this large pipe here, um, that have holes in it that people can look and shoot out of. Um, also, you can always faint out of like one right here to kind of like fall through or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it for what I've done this week. Let me throw it in the uh, play mode, and I will show you some of those matinees that I was talking about. So instead of just having the light be a normal light, I gave this one a flicker in its animation. So uh, once you activate the door, it's like it's getting a kind of odd power surge where there might be a frayed wire somewhere or whatever, and so it's kind of got this continuous flicker once you activate it, um, because effectively it's the power. Um, and then there's a back door here. This is one of my favorite ones because once the door ascends, it kind of falls out of its alignment and uh, catches itself on the wall kind of thing. So it drops into a slanted, disconnected, uh, like it's broken now kind of feel to it. Um, but yeah, these are the back areas to these corners the outside, um, which I haven't gotten a chance to work on yet, um, which I'll be doing in the coming weeks here. Um, so yeah, like I said, I primarily just focused on the uh, central area for this one. So come over here, do the same thing. Uh, this one, it's it gets brighter, 
So when you activate the panel, it it's like it gets a surge of energy and it's now um, much brighter on the surface. Um, and then once again, we got one of these doors back here. This one doesn't do anything special; it just opens like it's supposed to. Activate it, it opens up most of the way, but stops in this kind of open uh, position, so you can like tell that this door has been open, kind of thing. And then the other side, which also kind of wants to point here. you can see all the way through to the other side. It's really hard with like kind of the mist effect, but you can see all the way over there, just above the crosshair here. You can see all the way over the other side, so it's a Clearly, like, all the way through, just to, like you know where people are. You can't necessarily control like, like, objects in the way. You can kind of like hit some of the grading or whatever. So it's really difficult to kind of shoot that far. Um, but it's more for like a line of sight, uh, not so much a line of movement or firing. So open this door. Once again, it has that like, open feel to it. Or that it was a closed door, uh, but now it's open. So then there's this lever, and the lights come on. Both doors open. So yeah, once again, I use spotlights in this room to have that much brighter, um, intense lighting. Uh, that way, it really draws people's attention to, okay, I just pulled this lever, what happened? And it's like, oh, wow, there's a really bright light over here. I mean, outer uh, route that you can take. Um, and so yeah, that's, that's it for this week. Um, really just kind of dove into um, the static mesh placement, um, the lighting, and finished up some of the texturing and whatnot, as you can see. So got like these grates uh, textured out on the front. So catwalks look pretty good um but yeah that's that's it for this week um there will be more in the coming weeks like i said i'm gonna be doing the second level the third level and the outside so like those ulterior alternative routes um where like you have to open up the doors to kind of use um i've got some kind of cool plans uh, in store for that so be sure to continue watching upcoming weeks. Uh, thanks for watching.